and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Leona Targaryen. We're going to be playing some Leona with some dragons. And so this is a donation deck. So the two Ds here mean these are viewer submitted decks and all four of them are today. And this was a deck that the person said to name Leona Targaryen because we have Leona and her dragons. So we got um, all sorts of dragons, the White Flame Protector, Fused Firebrand, and Volius Vox, and Infinite Mind Splitter, and Aurelian Soul. We have a couple of payoffs for the dragons. We got our Skies Descend, dealing 15 to all enemies. And um, then the other thing that we have here is we're splashing Freljord for Augur of the Old Ones, so that we are able to grant our dragons Overwhelm and Regeneration. That could be pretty awesome with these large dragons, you know, 8-8 eight, eight Overwhelm Regeneration that, of course, whenever it kills a unit, gets plus one, plus one, or, you know, Aurelian Soul with Overwhelm Regeneration. That, of course, could get pretty silly. So that's what our deck's about. We also got a couple of Avalanche and a couple of Troll Chant and Icefill Archer. Those are all of our Freljord cards in here. Um, but then we're just playing Leona to help slow the game down, because... Daybreak gets you a great one drop, great two drop, and then Leona, of course, whenever you play her, stuns the strongest enemy and is a really big blocker. So it just kind of slows the game down and gives us time for our dragons to take over or for the skies to descend. I guess that, that's a good way to put it. it. Gives us time for the skies to descend. So we're going to go play over in ranked like we always do. We're going to go play five games. Here we go. We are facing against Gustavo. I think we just kind of mulligan everything. This is going to be an aggressive deck. Bilgewater Noxus. We got to get out there early. White Flame Protector is a good card to have on turn four. So I guess we're going to keep that one as a baseline. So like at, at very worst, we have that. Um, but yeah, we need to get earlier stuff. We'd like to see like Avalanche... That would be a good one to see. Shield Bear is okay. <clears throat> Both Shield Bear and Icefill Archer are better to play on their turn than on my turn, so it's a little awkward. My faith protects me. We'll go with the Shield Bear this turn and then try to play the Icefill Archer on their turn. Still like to see Avalanche. They really don't want us adding blockers. So we can try to, you know, we this is going to bridge our gap to get to turn four. And now we can have turn four, white flame protector, turn five, white flame protector, turn six, auger. Monkey business. That card's cool. Uh, yeah, we're going Protector. If they play something like Gangplank next turn, we can have... Okay, so if I attack, this turns into a 5-3. Would I rather have a 5-3 or a 4-4? Four, four? I guess a 4-4. Four, four. We can have Leona stun. Gangplank if they play that. When we're done, I'm taking your head. Don't make promises you can't keep, little girl. There we go. Behold the sun's holy light. And now Leona's a better blocker for misfortune also. Well, I guess not really with the powder keg. Either way, misfortune can trade up. Do we have any kind of Nexus healing in this deck? We have we have the five mana gain five. Star shaping, and I think that is it. Face my shield. Love ya. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, there we go. That's star shaping. That's good. Giving Leona Overwhelm and Regeneration, so Leona will go back to being a 3-5. That's too bad. Your king 
That's too bad. This is going to be difficult to survive. This is going to be pretty difficult to survive. Yuck. We're a long ways away from having the skies descend. But not too far away from star sh from Infinite Mind Splitter. Ooh, a second star shaping. That's going to be clutch. Okay, so all of my units are taking three. We're going to have the 4-2 block here, the 5-3 block there. This thing can block and doesn't, cannot block, it doesn't matter, this thing just dies. No matter what. So this would be us going to negative 4. Let's not go to negative 4. This would be us going to 1. Probably have to worry about warning shot. I'm going to take the Cosmic Inspiration. I guess we will have to behold another Celestial card for one of these. But we'll have the Solari that can help out with that. So that was definitely pretty fortunate for us to draw both of our Star Shapings. Yeah, those are our only two Nexus Heal cards. Like, right after I said them, then we drew both of them. That was definitely pretty fortunate. All right, mind splitter time. Wow. That's the noise that mind splitter makes. Wow. I like getting this thing out of here so they just stop getting powder kegs, but obviously powder kegs just don't really matter. Dang. Too aggressive. All just too much. Okay, playing against another large deck. I like having Celestials against Trindomir. I like... I like being on the celestial side of that battle. It's, you know, the ramp and the trundle. You know, that kind of stuff. Will they will they ramp and be too fast? Hopefully not. Yeah, no monkeying around with our last opponent. Definitely not. Let's look for some celestial cards. What do we got? Deal four to one enemy and one to another. That's a good way to get rid of a weirding stones. Uh, written in stars. Nah, eh, I don't really like that. Golden sister, kind of cool with the silver sister being all elusive and stuff. And gets two four three bodies in play. I'm gonna just take that. Let's get two four three bodies in play instead of just killing an O four. The one problem with the Golden Sister is that we have Augur the old ones in the same slot, but we don't really have anything for turn at six. I meant seven. We don't really have anything for turn seven. All right, leveling up Leona. Doesn't really help, man. What a what an ugly turn for me here, though. I guess I guess I should have got the deal four, deal one. Man, that that deal four, deal deal one would be looking really good right now for a block trundle. 
and then do that. What do I think will be nerfed next patch? Um, I think Ezreal and Yordle Grifter will both be nerfed from what they were saying. Uh, kind of, ex kind of expecting both of those to be nerfed. Um, but it's either they're, they'll both be nerfed either this patch or, or the next patch. That's what they said in the next two patches for those two cards. Scorching light, devotion through battle. And besides that, I think that the bilge water just kind of in general. I mean, Yodel Grifter, yes, but I mean, I would, I would think that like, um, even like Petty Officer or I don't know some of the the Nexus damage. Bilgewater's a little strong. I mean, I would I would definitely do Riptide Rex myself. I think the Riptide Rex would still be fine if it did, like, four uh, cannon barrages instead of... Instead of seven cannon barrages. So this is what we're worried about. Like, we're, are they going to be able to ramp too fast for us and get a little bit too far ahead? Because I, I like our late game quite a bit. It's just, will we get to our late game... I think our Celestials match up just fine. That's not good. It's just regular old Ice Quake. I guess we save one of these. I wish I didn't play my... I wish I had my 8 mana still and they, they do this and then it gets a double avalanche and kill Trundle, but... You think the Riptide Rex wording needs adjusting? What 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 about the wording do you think needs adjusting? For the thrill of battle. Turns Trendomir into a 9-9. There's not really a reason to do the second avalanche, I guess. I just want to kill these these ramp things. We're going to be taking all this damage anyway. Then I'm, I'm hoping to have Mind Splitter just slow down Trundle and Trindamir. If they have removal for my Mind Splitter, I'm dead. Sure hope they don't. Oh, or they just have that. We had a we had a bunch of really poor turns in there. Um, in the mid game, and they had a lot of ramp. Lulu Zed, Lulu Zed's pretty cool. This is a better hand. Avalanche, good against Zed, and probably against small units. Doesn't kill Lulu, but they probably have other small support units. Bless the people and see the heretics. We'll see, we may not play the Shield Bear on turn two if we're planning on playing Avalanche on turn three. I do think it's worth just playing the one drop with having the attack token and getting in there. If we don't have the attack token, I, I would have passed. I would not have played my three three. Yeah, we're, we're gonna be avalanching. This way, go. We're gonna pass first. It's not really that bad for me if they just go to go to attacks. It's just four damage. It's not really that big a deal. Just four damage, and now I get to play like the shield bear. <clears throat> Maybe they play something else into the avalanche. 
You guys have really got to keep your voices down. Okay. All right, not really. I tried. So I could probably wait one more turn. Ooh, good thing I didn't wait one more turn. We'll follow you to the edge of daybreak. Good thing we didn't wait one more turn. You're covered. No eight drop for the auger yet. Um, I want to play the Involius Vox first. There's nothing a good giggle can't fix. I don't know about that, Lulu. So Lulu's about to turn into a three-four. The quiet of the woods. There's nothing like it. I don't really like how this is playing out for me. I heard these these daybreak cards are even worth playing. It just feels like yeah, you know, I really like the avalanche and just we saw last game the power of the ramp. It does just feel like this is worse than just going Frel Yord and playing ramp and avalanche to go along with the dragons. Hold nothing back. Than playing these daybreak cards. Daybreak cards kind of feel unnecessary. Okay, nice. We get Lulu out of here. Well, I am happy about that. I was kind of expecting some kind of protection for Lulu. Even like a Ranger's Resolve would have saved Lulu. I am definitely happy about that. Let's go with the Daybreak card first. Yeah, Involius Vox is sweet. Creating free dragons. Like, these dragons are awesome. Punish transgressions. No. My strength is yours. Genevieve. I think my plan. Yeah, my plan is going to be to to troll chant this thing, and I want to get multiple other blockers in play. Do we go like priestess, troll chant, and shield bearer? Um, just want to invoke. Also, sunlight guiding my brethren. These woods belong to us. I'm giving Genevieve minus two, minus zero. This will be three power. It's just what to pump up. Either pump up the auger. Yeah, we'll pump up auger. So now auger will have four health. It's so basically we either have auger have four health or the Solari soldier have four health. One of those two. I guess it makes more sense to have the auger have four health. There's only one true life. I think that's kind of like the best to play Mind Splitter on, on your turn to stun them before they, um, they would be able to attack. All right, they finally got there. I think we wait till next turn. Like if, if they want to have Genevieve block my 5-5 five five and, and trade, that's good. I mean, not wait till next turn, but wait till af after combat. Because uh, otherwise I pick things that stun and then they just easily block with those things. Or even Sun Guardian. I guess we could have gone Sun Guardian then Morning Light. Maybe I should have just done that and been really aggressive with the Overwhelms. This would have been another 8, 10, 12, 14. Yeah, 10, 12, 14, 
That would have been a lot of overwhelm. Honestly, that's probably what I should have done instead of being so defensive. Of course, with that, we lose to like a, uh, a deny. I don't know if we lose to a deny. I don't know. We'd have another 5 8 overwhelm. What's up, Darth Drew? GG's. Alright, picked up a win. Alright, same thing from earlier. Our second loss. We hope they don't ramp too hard into these champions, right? Like, that's what we don't want to see. We'll keep our Daybreak cards. Because, like, we're... We're a defensive deck. We need to stay alive. But then we play, like, a 3-mana 1-2. And a 3-mana 1-2 does not help you stay alive. And this is exactly what we do not want to see. Them having ramp. I don't think we play Leona first, because then they can just play Trundle. And then we can't sack. Okay, no trundle. Glorious light rains down. Weirding stones is pretty good, you know, being an 0-4. It's a good card. All right, let's go Fused Firebrand. Let's get the Power of Dragons. Well, that's a good turn for us. They had nothing else to do. Feel the sun's glory. That's definitely good for us. Yep, yep, playing your Leona Targaryen deck. Yeah, I like Leona. I mean, Leona is a good card that helps us get to soul. I don't know what it, there's something about the deck. Like I think it's it's probably like the interaction. We we'll probably need three avalanche, and you know maybe some other like removal kind of cards and stuff like that. Like we just don't have. That's what I feel like we don't have enough like removal and things like that. A lot of games playing just one beefy... That's what I've kind of learned with this format. In this format, just playing one beefy unit a turn doesn't normally get there. With all the Nexus damage and ways to go wide with the Bilgewater and Noxus decks. I smell a fight! So I'm playing the Protector instead of the oh Fused Firebrand... Name. So that I can have a second hush available in case we need it. And plus, if we're going to have something to trade with Trindamir, I'd rather trade with 4-4 than 5-5. Five, five. And if not, we'll just keep the spell mana. I'm sorry, Nenuel. War Mother's Call. That card is awesome. Well, I want to stun things with Mind Splitter. But... 
I'm gonna wait a little bit. Oh, can I play Cosmic Inspiration? No, I can't play Cosmic Inspiration yet. I don't I, I don't even behold another celestial card, so never mind. We'll just play this thing. I want them to actually have multiple things for me to stun and not just a 5-5 with the mind splitter. So we'll wait on it. This'll take the chill off. Well, neither of those were very good War Mother's hits. Which is good news for us, because they're not, not very good War Mother's hits, but also kind of bad news, because we wanted to stun the two things. So if they were good hits, we'd be able to stun them. Bless the people and fear the heretics. Are they going Ruination? Yuck. An 11-11 regeneration. Guess we just pass and have them get more things in play from War Mother's Call before a ruination would happen. We fight for one frail yard. No mercy for heretics. Ours is the one true light. To shine like the sun, you must burn like it. Yeah, I guess for Aurelian Soul, I'd, I'd be expecting like Vile Feast plus Ruination, right? Because, yeah, I know it, it doesn't just die to Ruination immediately by itself. Um, but that, that's what I would be expecting. It would be something to that respect. So we got a vengeance out of their hand. The heavens diminish without so now they can't use like Vile Feast uh, Vengeance. We have Avalanche Vengeance. It's not an attack. Against War Mother's Call, it's actually better for you to not kill their things, because they're gonna run out of room, and so then they'll get they'll their things will start getting burned. I was hoping that we were gonna be able to stun something. Need to find another Aurelian soul. So we're going with this written in stars. Look for a Aurelian soul, please. No, not Leona. Yuck. Get rid of a champion. Thank you. The Solari will unite the heavens. So yeah, it was the only a, it was a one out of three chance we've got a really in soul with that. Forward in the name of the Solari. Show 
frozen of the sun. Stand and fight! So yeah, they had to just ruination to clear up the space. Our strength is yours. Today we fight as one. I can't. I can't risk the scourge because then I won't behold a celestial card for supernova anymore. I wish we would have got better things than that. You know, like champions. Hmm. Alright. He's keeping an atrocity against that deck. With Avalanche and, and Icequake and stuff. I just don't... I just, I'm not liking this Daybreak stuff, unfortunately. For this kind of deck. Um, or, you know, Demacia with fight cards. I like that too. There's a sweeper. Okay, now we talking. Cost 15 mana, so we're going to mulligan it, but I like it. And yeah, this is not an avalanche matchup, even though I was just talking about... <laughs> I was just talking about how sweepers are good, and then we're mulliganing the sweepers. Yeah, She Who Wanders, that's a, that's a great one. Twice as large as what I got, got going on. Why did I play this on turn one? I thought I had the attack token. I was just talking too much. The horizon. So we maybe missed out on one point of damage, but I guess we didn't let them play anything first if they had a two mana card. It's not that likely they had a two mana card that was going to deal with this, because their two mana card's probably the Herald Shake of Dragons. The That's what I was going to say. The Dragon's the allies cost one less. They weren't going to be blocking with that thing anyway. All right, two out of four for Leona. Now, this is a go-to attacks, not play the four mana card first, because we could play a three five or a four four, but they, they get to play five five or four five. And so we are not going to be, um, yeah, so we don't want to do that before attacking. Because they're Hell of the Dragons. They're just a little bit ahead of, ahead of us. The dawn has arrived. Just take the spell shield, but might as well play it. It's better than playing a Solari soldier. Oh, that's right, Nenuel. I wrote that down in very tiny letters at the end, and I forgot about that. So yeah, so currently you took out one in one it white flame and one firebrand for two sunbursts to get a little bit more removal. Which, I like that. That's pretty good. I mean, that, I think that's probably necessary. We will not but we're still talking about, they will not you know, kind of an expensive one-for-one one card. Where a deck like this that's going to be behind kind of needs more than that. It needs ways to catch up from behind. And I'm not sure if Sunburst is that. Sunburst would be kind of good here to, like, take down the Fused Firebrand. Hopefully, Involius Vox does, but not necessarily, depending on what they have. Bless the faithful and fear the heretics. So I'm kind of expecting Concerted Strike. So, like, let's say I attack out. They Concerted Strike, 
like the Involius Fox, block the 4-4, have the 3-3 block a 2-2, and we do 5 damage to them, and then we basically have nothing left. We don't really have any options besides that, besides just passing. They, they still do have basically twice as many cards in hand as we do, and I can't get through the 6-5. Uh, I mean, I could I could attack with, like, just the Involius Vox, but the problem attacking with just Involius Vox is if they, again, like, Concerted Strike my 4-4, four, four, now their thing's a 7-6, and they block and get to just eat the Vox also, so Concerted Strike can just eat both of these. And good pass. Good pass. That would have been a really bad attack into that concerted strike. Okay, I like that card. That can help us out. Help us find something. This could be a good time to have the, that Sky's Descend. Yeah, that's Sky's Descend is a card that we haven't had this whole time. And so, as you're saying, that's kind of the sweet break. This would be a good time to draw that. We, I think we had it one time previously. No mercy for heretics. This thing's too big and just keeps on getting larger. Maybe I need to make that block with the... Maybe I need to make that block with that card. Oh, gotta behold another Celestial card. That's kind of the problem with playing just Star Shaping. Is because Star Shaping with these 7 through 9, there's so many of them that say Behold. And if you're... So I guess that's why we had to have the three mana card, because we have to get more Celestials. This is the card we need. We need this card. We're going to take this one, though. Virtue guides me. Yeah, hopefully we can find skies. The skies descend. It's the card that we need. Skies descend. We can play it next turn. It costs eleven mana. Good cast it. Wrong sweeper. <laughs> we need the skies descend. We'll 
Well, this is not a very good... Uh, not very good, but basically, you know, we just got get Supernova. We're going to obliterate these two. This should keep the Aurelian Soul from leveling up. Um, but then we don't get to do anything else, unfortunately. All these things costing four, and Moonglow is just a pretty poor card. I think we just save the spell mana and not play Moonglow. Give this plus zero plus two and spell shield. But yeah, we'll just do that. We'll just do that. Scourge is the best one as it can take down their Aurelian Soul. That's, you know, as long as our Aurelian Soul levels up here. Well, that thing probably just kills me. Maybe it's best for me to trade Aurelian Soul with their Aurelian Soul. Maybe it's actually best for me to, just to trade. At least try trading. Then we would get a new dragon. No, we can't. We can't trade because we're we're not going to win if we trade. This this thing's going to kill me. Like our our only hope is that we hit some really good celestial cards, like the random celestial cards of the really in soul. And get to cast them for zero, like a Living Legends or something. I think that that's our only hope. Uh, can we get Great Beyond with Vox? No, Vox can only can get dragons, but not the Celestial Dragon. It can only just it just generates like the regular old dragons. It doesn't get a really soul either. So no, no, no Great Beyond. Most likely it's going to be us losing this, but you never know. Maybe we hit Living Legends. Another Scourge. I do love an audience. Okay, definitely love seeing that card. Try keeping her down. Definitely love seeing that. Look for an elusive. Okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, I think we just gotta go with this. Leveled up Aurelian Soul, pretty crazy. When you can get there.
They only have 17 elusive damage right now. Scourge. It's been down to one. That's not dead. I've given up no. The three three elusive. So that's twenty. I can give minus two. So that's exactly eighteen. Exactly lethal. So we'll play one of these things. It's fun to play those. Exact lethal. Honestly, who loses with a space dragon on their side? Okay, so not not too great of showing here for our Leona Targaryen deck. Um, yeah, it just feels just feels kind of slow and too expensive. The the Augur of the old ones is like a pretty cool pretty cool theory, but in practice, it's just unnecessary and adds more really expensive cards to the deck. I think I think it needs to kind of focus on. Um, like board clears and nexus healing and things like that and and ramp and just getting to that stuff faster than what we currently are like so basically i think like if we're splashing for all your we should be splashing for like the o4 ramp card um and that kind of stuff and you know like like doing doing that kind of stuff um The Sunburst would help a little bit, but again, it's still just like a really expensive like one-for-one one answer. And not answer everything, you know, only answer a couple of things. Um, maybe just need to do a better job of drawing the Skies Descend when we need it. Maybe I need to do that. Um, but... <clears throat> like... Troll Chant didn't really do anything for our deck. That that could be a better interaction spell. Like we, the size of our units are so large anyway that like Troll Chant didn't really help. Didn't do things that we needed to. Um, like Ice Fill Archer, I think could probably be better as like Kindly Tavern Keeper for healing three. I know that's that's a three mana card. Um, but you know it it also, you know like it. Yeah, it didn't it didn't trade well um, at two mana. It never you know never really it never traded up with anything other than a two mana card and didn't the the frostbite wasn't too valuable because we have to kind of play this on turn two because we're you know like our opponents are playing one drops two drops we have to play it on turn two and you know it's not really better than like it you know it wasn't any better than like Avaros and Sentry would have been where it would have drawn us a card and trade with something for example. All right, but there we go. That's that's Leona Targaryen. Definitely a really cool deck name, and these dragons are really powerful. But I think getting getting a more reliable uh, first like five six turns and getting to these faster and trying to get ahead with these dragons is really where we need to focus moving forward. All right, those of y'all watching it later on YouTube, uh, hit that like button over there, and of course feel free to leave those comments as well. But thank you so much for watching some Leona Targaryen, and I'll see you for the next video.